All right, so here is the public listing for guild ships, and I'm still at the top, even though <laughs> it's been years. We're still number one. So that's good. There was somebody who had even more prestige than us, but it looks like they're not playing anymore. It's really good. It should. It's cost billions and billions of credits. I'm really close to catching up with the next couple people in this stronghold list. There was a bug when they merged all the servers together. If you had strongholds on other servers, it combined all of your prestige and then made it a, a total on this server. So these people with like over a million, they just had lots of strongholds. I got my prestige up to about to where it is now because I had strongholds on other servers, but not that many other servers, unfortunately. So um, the only way that I can actually effectively get this up now is to acquire new, new decos. And that is a very slow and expensive process. But all things considered, I don't really play. I haven't really played. So the fact that I'm still in the top 10 is really good. At least for my... I don't think I own Manon. No, actually, it looks like I do. Oh, no, I don't. I thought I bought Manon. Okay, I do own this one, whatever one this is. Narshada, yeah. Oh, that's right. My Narshada. Yeah, let's... Where am I in this list? I'm right here. I set up my Narshada as a vacation home. Like a vacation spa. So this was back when the um, when the Eternal Empire was taking over, and the Sith and the Re and the Republic were working together. So I made this a vacation spa for both. And so they basically like land here and they check in. This is the check in for the Jedi, right? And this is the check in for the Sith. And then these are the you know like further check-in points, and then here's the front desk. And then they go down into the, the resort. On the right is the Sith, and on the left is the Republic. And, um... Each of the areas is themed, so this is Republic-themed. You know, which spent a lot of time doing this back in the day and then this side is sith see sith themed it's just slightly different and then in this area here this is like the lounge for all of them they can hang out Then they go down to the dining area. So this is the this is the the Republic side. Actually, it's not just a dining area. It's like a gambling. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of gambling here. So this is the casino. And obviously, they can mingle. They don't have to stay on their specific sides. And then down here is the, I'm pretty sure it's like, okay, this is the discotheque. Pretty cool. And then this is the dining room. And we have a, a bar and a band.
And then here is where people can take a ride over and like if they wanted to explore Narshida or if they wanted to arrive here like with a date for dinner or something like that. Yeah, put a lot of a lot of time into this uh, stronghold. I've always felt like I wanted music here. You can actually like turn music on, but it doesn't automatically play when you walk into the room. And then outside is a little bit. So this is the Sith side right here. And outside we have like the lounge area where people can hang out outside if they want or and go into the hot tub. I really like Narshida, so why why I decided to build the stronghold here. So that's the Narshida design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, uh, it's a resort. It's a, it's a it's Imperial and Republic themed resort. A lot of the decos are unique, although probably not now that the game has been out for so long. But when I originally designed it, like this stove was new. A lot of these were hard to get. Oh, they're probably easy to get now, but... This here was also like a unique reward for something. Uh, so that's Narshida. My main personal stronghold is on Tatooine. Which is right here. Decorating in this game is something that I really like. Recommend a heroic 2 plus mission? I don't know, like, I it, I know that this game is much different than other, where you really need to have, like, people doing, doing your specific roles. Um, so I'm not sure if the hirelings are strong enough, or if you should actually group up. I remember when I was playing a couple years ago that I would just join random groups because it was too difficult to do a lot of the content alone. But we'll have to sort of figure out where the new meta is for like what can be done and what can't be done. So this is my Tatooine stronghold. It's set up with a throne. And all of, you know, the um, the council members would have a chair. And then we have um, the Jawa vendors there. We have the GTN. We have uh, more vendors here cooking food. I think those are womp, skewered womp rats. And these are some Mandalorians and bounty hunters that are just on Tatooine hanging out. These are my personal quarters, right? With the fireplace and a forging station. Just general stuff and a Twi'lek dancer because why not? And some of this stuff was like hard to get. Like this thing here was from some event. The, uh, the frame rate in here is, like, blowing out my graphics card. I'm not sure why. This here is, like, a, um, a Sith Sanctum. So this is yet another one of the thrones. This is more of, like, a reflective area for the dark side of the Force. 
And these little air vents, you know, they, they're there to do a couple things, like keeping the, um, the air in the rooms clean. We also use some of the, um, forget what they're called, Voss, I think they're Voss. We use Voss healing crystals to do that as well. In here, this is just sort of like a, a room with statues. This particular thing is a raid re reward. Um, so you're asking me how to how to uh, quest with other people, right? Isn't there a group finder? Yeah, these are the Kree healing crystals. So people who are like outside on the in the desert of Tatooine, because it's super hot, super dry. Um, regular people really can't survive for long. Like these put moisture into the air, and then these Kree crystals, you know, they'll they heal you up as you walk in. But you can spend time outside. We actually, one of the interesting things about this is that they've made so much money that they can afford to have a hot tub on Tatooine where the water would just constantly evaporate, but it keeps getting replenished. This here, I think this is the Mandalorian sort of area. Yeah, this is... Mandalorian and bounty hunters are in this area here. Because a lot of what we're doing on Tatooine has to has to do with like taking over local regions and rounding up people and then throwing them in these little temporary prisons here. A lot of these statues are like raid rewards. And then we're doing things like this is just a bunch of people testing equipment. I'm not sure what's in this room. It used to be a medical bay, but it's not anymore. Oh, this is for any Republic sort of diplomat that we are allied with at the moment they can sort of have a little sanctuary in here so this is all republic again this is going back to when the eternal empire was taking over so the sith and the republic were allied i don't think that's the case anymore this is more like processing out here we have Jawa, and this is the little Jawa village. So this is where the little Jawas are set up to sell stuff to the people who happen to be at the base. And you can go in, check out all the stuff in the actual village. They sell things like robots and parts and gear and stuff like that. And then over here, this is just like a like an outpost where they're scanning the desert, I guess. Looking for more of those insurgents with the Mandalorians. And again, this is a Gree heal just to keep these people from like being overwhelmed by the heat. And then down here. This is our sort of like a hall of records as, as well as like the computer room. So all of these plates are like nightmare tokens for completed like flashpoints or raids. So it's sort of like a mini hall of, of deeds, I guess you could say. All the stuff that we did back in the day on hard mode or nightmare mode. Um, and we have some sound effects that we can 
we can enable in here. They're not automatically on, unfortunately, but... So I think that's what computer noise is, and this is probably people talking or something. Oh, it actually tells us. That's a tech lab. So they're both tech lab. Yeah, there's... Um, Hard mode Revan right there, which was such a pain to do, but I did it. Here's Agree. I guess they don't mind. These are Mandalorian vendors just selling stuff. Um, we're back to the Republic and Imperial. This is a medical center for both of them. If anybody does get overwhelmed by the heat, this is where we would send them to heal them up. And then this, by the look of that sign, is a bar. Yeah, this is a bar where people can come and hang out and relax. And then there's one more place that we didn't see, and this is like the tunnel. And this is where we have a super weapon, a Sith super weapon, just in case we need to detonate the entire facility. And then there's a bunch of relics. And then over here, this is, again, this is back to when it was like a, um, an alliance. So this is a Jedi like a Jedi reliquary or reliquary or whatever you'd say. More of the Gree heal crystals and the air processors. Something about this particular zone though is really stressing out my frame rate, but I think it's because it's not optimized because it should work fine so this is just like energy right the whole point of Tatooine is you know they're trying to like farm different materials and energies and things like that and then here this is again outside these are troops that are that have just landed on the planet and they are being um I think this is, that looks like Darth Malgus, yeah. So this is right when Darth Malgus sort of appeared and like, we knew he was alive again. And he's addressing troops that are here working for me, kind of giving them an overview of like why we're here on Tatooine, because we're here basically looking for resources and stuff. And, uh. So these are the troops. We've got the Gree crystals all around just because it's probably like 150 degrees out. And without these, they, these people would probably all be out cold from heat exhaustion. Especially like people like this who are like fully suited up. Like look at all these dudes. They have like helmets on and stuff. So, And then we have Colto just in case somebody actually really needs like an infusion. But... That's pretty much it for my Tatooine stronghold. But that's the gist of like all of the different decisions for all the different things. A lot of time went into these. And I have a buddy who does design and it's even he's even more elaborate. But so one of the other areas that we can go look at I haven't been to these in a long time so we looked at Narshida so go to the guild ship Guildship has a, like, a much more thought-out 
sort of a, like a role play aspect to it, even though we don't role play. Or I never actually got into role play. There was a lot of thought that went into the actual design of the ship itself and the function of each individual location. So kind of right away when you zone into the ship, we wanted you to be greeted with like an area that was useful. So you've got all the bank stuff here. You've got the GTN there and mail. You've got vendors here. And then you've also got the special specialty goods vendor. The ship itself, like if you were a visitor to the ship, It's set up around basically like a functioning Sith army. So while these are the personal guards of me and like my staff, all of the regular stuff over here is just all, you know, they're just working the computers for the specific, uh, you know, task at hand for the ship. And it's basically the same. There are little Sith sanctums like that right there. And then the throne, it basically follows the same design. Like, it's a Sith throne, and this Bronte statue is, you know, that was like the first nightmare boss that I beat, and I got the wings from her. So I put her behind my throne every time I design a throne. Um, I forget what planet we're in orbit around. I th think it's... Wherever that event is with the racing, I forget. I'd have to look. Everything is basically Sith themed. And then down in these areas here, we get we get a little bit more specific. So this is like a computer room. These are massive supercomputers. And then over here, this is like a tactical area where we're making plans and assessing whatever region we're in more specific stuff to tactics over here you can also like alter your gear if you wanted to but then this thing here will give us like a specific readout for something that we were doing and then this area here is just more processing these computers come from the gree and then over here we have like training for troops that are going to be stationed on the ship and uh, I guess they're being interrogated by one of the lesser Sith Lords that's on the ship these computers like they they do interact they're not automatically on but you can turn them on and they're pretty good like it's a good deco More of the supercomputers here, and then more of the Gree processing computers. There's a couple of bounty. Oh, there's one bounty hunter here, so he must be like investigating something. Then down this way, this is where all the escape pods are. And so what we did is we put troops here with a computer. So they can like regulate the, if there was a need to use the escape pods, they can just keep it orderly. So there's not like a massive rush to, to evacuate the ship. We have a statue of Valkorion, obviously, even though he, the Eternal Empire, we took it over. Uh, he technically is like the Sith Emperor or was before we defeated him and became the Sith Emperor ourselves. So... We still have a statue up to him. This is sort of like the processing area. So if somebody arrived to the ship in one of the shuttle bays, they would come up this elevator and like arrive here and be interrogated by these people. 
And any weapons that they had would be like taken and put here temporarily and monitored by these people. And then, you know, then they could seek an audience with me, go up there, or they could come around this way and like hang out. Let, let's say they were like a trader or a bounty hunter and they just visited temporarily. They would check in there, leave their guns, and then they could go here. This little droid is going to scan them when they walk in, but now they can basically hang out and enjoy, relax. So we do have some people who are relaxing. Um, we had a droid that was playing a game, with, obviously, with the Wookiee and got ripped apart because that's sort of what they do. There's a Gree. These people are playing like the Star Wars equivalent of a Dungeon Dragons game, right? Like, here's the Dungeon Master, and they're playing this sort of electronic game. Um, more cooking. Apparently, this skewered monkey lizard is really popular. This dude is singing with these people, but again, there's like no music that I can turn on. It's too bad. There, there should be some music that goes with that. And then here's this is a bar. I think this has like interactive. I thought that these interacted. Guess they don't. Uh, here you can gamble, and these actually work. So if you have like the necessary chips, you can actually gamble on these and win stuff. I just don't have any chips on me at the at the moment. Um, we have a hut here or whatever. I'm not sure which one that is, uh, who's basically just hanging out, getting a dance from a Twi'lek, and then this dude is getting a dance from a whatever that is, a Merilukan, or I, I forget. Whatever, I am that, whatever race that is, that's a, this particular character is, one of those. And then down here, this is sort of where all the officers would hang out, so obviously, like, there's a lot of security. It's very Sith. An average person wouldn't come here unless they came here specifically to have an audience with me or some of the council people. So we do have somebody here. Um, I forget this. Yeah, Darth Melora. Although I think Melora eventually dies, but she's here right now. It's again more of the throne theme. And... This person here in the Carbonite is somebody that aggravated me, who used to be in my guild, so I, I put them in Carbonite, and they are still stuck there, and I'm not letting them go. These are our forced... So we have a bunch of, like, lower Sith Lords who are doing experiments with the dark side of the Force, and interacting with it like a force entity right there and then this is like another dark side forging station thing so there's like a lot of sith dark side force stuff going on down here so the average visitor to the ship wouldn't come down here not unless there was a specific reason and we used to have like guild meetings down there when the guild was filled with people So if somebody came to the ship and then wanted to stay on the ship, they could go to the crew deck. Or maybe they were here to see the command deck. So we'll see the command deck. This is, again, but I like originally decorated this when we had the Sith and the Republic were allied. So this command deck, again, it's a lot of high security, but... It's where either of the factions would go. So, the Sith would go here. The Jedi would go here. This is a raid reward. I forget what raid. We got that. We'll go check this area out. This is all Republic. So, anybody who is from the Republic, who, who spends time on the ship, could come into here and 
you know, basically hang out with other Republic soldiers and Jedi Knights and things like that. Um, the whole theme for the Republic and the Jedi is, you know, growth and light and life, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of green, there's a lot of light. There's a lot of red, but that's just the ship itself. It's You can't really get rid of that red. So otherwise, this would be more like green. But it's still saturated with red just because this is a an Imperial ship. But this room is is not and you know we actually even have these little ecospheres that was a conscious choice though we wanted it to be like very alive and then the sith side is similar to what we've already seen it's just a lot of dominated by a lot of like the sith artifacts sith relics the dark side of the force and then again, the theme that I do, this is me personally, all of my thrones have Brontes behind them. So there's another, yet another, you know, throne, another location that I could meet with people. There's a bunch of lesser Siths who are, you know, interacting with the environment in a way that would increase the dark side of the force or something like that. And then here we have our official, this is where we have the official Guild Hall of Records. And so this basically is, on the planet we had like a lesser version of this, but this is where we have all of our like major accomplishments as a guild. So like here, this is the Brontes Nightmare Mode. I don't even know if they call it Nightmare anymore. They might call it Master Mode. Uh, this is where we we got the master mode kill for for Brontes, and I was one of the tanks in that, and I won the role on the wing on, on her wings. So this is the actual like I have the wings on the kick on I tanked it on a power tech, so I have it on my power tech. But that's the deco for that reward for that, and then there's a bunch of other you know all the different nightmare. And hard mode, certain hard mode bosses that we did as a guild. So this is a record of all of those. There's Revan hard mode, which I did. And if you guys know that fight, it's ridiculously hard. I did the callouts for it. So looking at the aberrations and, and you know, calling them out while people are fighting that big energy pillar at the end. It was super difficult and it's one of those things that's like it was so hard i want to be able to put it on like a resume and say i did hard mode revan but you know what nobody cares <laughs> nobody cares and a lot of other people have done it since then but it was a big deal at the time more nightmare and hard mode stuff I always liked the idea of having a Hall of Records, and so I was always kind of happy with this, the way this came out. I, there's a, um, a player who plays, his name is Dar uh, Darth Callus, who plays, he's one of the best like designers that I've seen in this game, so he helped me with a lot of this, and largely he designed this whole area here. I've just like updated it as the game has gone further but he came up with the initial idea uh based on a conversation that we had like i said i want like a hall of records and then he came up with that so it's really good i will also showcase his strongholds too because i can still access them with my keys um and show you guys those on a, in a different stream we'll we'll go and look at his stuff because he's probably arguably like one of the best if not the best designer in this game i think i do pretty well with some of the stuff that i come up with but he's really good so anyway and there's a lot of other people who are pretty good too i know swoterista has a few people like that she's shown that did really good designs so this is the um the crew deck again heavily sith themed lots of security um we're we're you know because we're basically a military we're you know we're doing all of the normal stuff by having officers you know like 
honored and we stuck with the heavy Sith theme because these are my quarters. These are cards that are personal to me that are here just in case something happens. Because right over here, this is basically, this is Mandalorian. So any Mandalorian that visits the ship is going to be sent here where they're going to basically stay and hang out. We'll look at this first. So this is all like Mandalorian. Uh, Shea Vizsla, obviously. At least she was the leader the last time I played. I don't know if there's a new leader now, but um, she's somebody that we have as a companion. And so this is just like a lot of their testing and a lot of like them hanging around and talking and a lot of the artwork and stuff is just very specific to Mandalore. They, they can actually like forge weapons and stuff like that. And security just because we need to know what's going on with the, you know, with the ship, that kind of thing. My personal quarters, guarded by my personal guards, very, very Sith, you know, because she's a Dark Lord of the Sith who beat the Emperor uh, and became, like, the Emperor herself, even though she's technically not an immortal Sith entity like the Emperor. You know, she effectively became the leader of the Eternal Army and... They eventually got rid of the Eternal Army with the, whatever came next. I'm sort of not that familiar with the newest storyline that they have in this game. but So when this design was done, that was what was going on. And so a lot of the stuff is based on the fact that like she acquired a lot of Sith relics. Very powerful Sith relics. A lot of stuff from like Korriban that she brought here personally. This is, again, because I beat... Brontes, there's another trophy of it because at the time it was a really big win. Uh, more Sith relics. And then in here is just where I can kind of relax. Like again, this is more relic, but I have a hot tub with a bunch of robots. And I can relax with my significant other in this area here. And then I've got my little, like, desk that I would work at and then you know my actual personal quarters and again because I killed Brontes and I like having it as a theme for her she's it's behind most everything so all the thrones all the beds that kind of thing and I'm using the wall packs to like section off different rooms so this is my private computer this is more just artifacts that would mean something to her this is sort of like a, um, that's like a Narshada thing, or like an Eternal Empire thing, I think, that scholar statue. That's an artifact up there. Oh, there's the Revan kill. So that's my personal quarters there. And that goes <clears throat> over here. Again, we're using the wall packs to separate. People can use the GTN or the banks. And then in here we have like just a bar where people would mingle. We used to actually have a lot of guild members, so they would like play with this ball and stuff. Um, and then based on what you were doing on this deck, this is a crew quarter for like anybody who is basically visiting the ship or somebody who's part of the crew they're on here this is where they stay we actually have showers uh for for people and yes we, we threw dancers in the showers just because why not they can check the prices of things there's loadouts of weapons for them uh, this here is where all of the droids on the ship, like, are manufactured, upgraded, and also, like, processed. So this entire area is all, like, robotic, and they're melting down, like, scrap and remodifying it and making whatever it is that they're going to make involving you know, like, the robot population on the ship. 
So it took quite a while to put this room together because there's a lot of decos that are really close to each other doing multiple things, but we, I wanted to sort of make... There's a lot of robot decos that I thought would work well together. So I'm, I'm kind of really happy with the way this came out. It's sort of, it's sort of very elaborate, but it's also very noisy. And then here, these are just like Imperial troops that are just monitoring like what the droids are up to, you know, because even though they can think for themselves or not, like autonomous they they basically like follow orders so they still have like imperial officers monitoring them and then here we have two rooms this is the prison so anybody who's arrested is sent here this is our detention our holding cells on the ship so whatever they would call it in star wars lingo the detention center um, anybody gets free, they're shot by these automated cannons, right? There's guards, there's more, like, sh little shrines to officers and things. The computers, these, uh, these people are, you know, basically, like, anybody who's added to the prison is, you know, processed here. And then we have our holding cells, this, you know, whatever this particular Jedi did. We have a bunch of holding cells... Some of them are empty. We have a bunch of means of like extracting information, what what would be called torture, probably. Um, the the worst offenders are put in carbonite, and then sold or traded to other, you know, either criminal organizations or other people in the empire. Let's say that some other sectors commander was looking for a specific bad guy, and we caught him we would throw him in carbonite and then ship him off and then we also interrogate them so this particular jedi here is being interrogated by one of the sith lords on the ship and because this jedi is like a high profile jedi it's got a lot of guards you know one jedi could basically kill everybody if they got a hold of their lightsaber we apparently haven't disarmed this particular one because maybe who knows why but Anyway, so that's the point there. Um, nobody in these cells. So it took a long time to come up with this concept, but I think it works really well, you know, and I've, I added these extra walls and these little cages and stuff, but basically this room has been the same for a long time. This is the medical bay. So anybody who needs like serious medical treatment is coming here to the medical bay. And I put a lot of thought into each of the different zones. So we have security droids. We have these culto infused beds. People who are like critically ill get this special culto chamber. Um, there's also the regular like, you know, what they use to revive Luke Skywalker, these sort of water or I, I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but um, and each of the chambers here has a unique like it will examine the DNA structure of whatever life form you put in there and then attempt to modify it back to its original like perfect state. And then if that fails or if there's something brought onto the ship that is like hyper infectious, it's put into this quarantined area that is guarded and through this secret door it's not a secret door but it's like an armored door and you can see in here there's like more people working more culto and there's just like a like a medical sort of supercomputer in here um, it doesn't look like there is anybody who's actually receiving this like who's in quarantine I'm not sure if I can get in here Yeah, nobody's specifically in there at the moment, but these are the two quarantine chambers. There's two more beds that have like specific readouts, and then this is the supercomputer right here. So we're we're set to deal with like any major medical issues that happen on the ship. And it took an awful long time to design that and come up with it. But I think it came out really well. I 
Okay, the hangar deck is something that I think is really cool. So hangar deck is where people come on and off the ship who aren't like necessarily in the Imperial Army, right? So it could be visitors, it could be diplomats. So there's a lot of security still. There's even more security with these walkers. And I even have my Imperial Guards down here. Heavily Sith themed still because it's a Sith ship. In here, this is where we've got a lot of troops working with like gear. There's security computers, there's weaponry, there's munitions, there's gold. Like we're actually receiving payments of gold. So the gold is going to be uh, offloaded to, you know, like our, our vaults. And then over here, we actually manufacture Colto on the ship itself. So this entire wing, this is a giant Colto manufacturer facility in order to like have the requirements that we need for the various planets. So this entire area, that's what we do. So these troops like monitor this device and that device, the environment that actually produces it is toxic, so we can't be in there itself. But we do have access to these like little side rooms, and this is where they actually like will look at the cans of it. Um, obviously, you can probably figure out by looking at it. We're not just manufacturing Colto, but that's the cover story, right? So this is a like a medical computer. This is actual Colto. But there's more that meets the eye that's going on here. They're actually manufacturing illicit substances um, that we sell in the black market. And so we've got a lot of like lab techs here. And then this is guarded, but this is where you would actually go in and actually like interact with the giant vat that's manufacturing the various substances. You can't really interact with this or do anything with it, but that's pretty much it. So it took an awful long time because if you were to look at this ship as it exists when you buy it this is just basically a giant empty room so like i had to make all of these each of these you know walls and and section off each of these areas and come up with like the floor plan for it so it took a it took a lot of thought but i'm happy really happy with the way it came out these are medical computers so it's just more in line with the fact that we do manufacture legit Colto, but we were also manufacturing like illicit substances as well. And then over here, this is just very specific to like the Imperial Army. So this is any sort of landing that we need to do, any sort of interacting with like a planet surface that we need to do um, would be done in this deck right here. This is so we have our drop ships and all that stuff, troops. Very standard, like that, you know, that's pretty, pretty standard. And then if we go down to the bottom level engineering, this is pretty standard too. Lots of security again, and we're sticking with the Sith theme. Lots of computers that they're monitoring. Um, the ship here, this is whatever this is, isotope nine or element zero, whatever that is, that's what we're using to power a lot of the stuff on the ship. So these are canisters of that that are actually utilized in this device right there. Uh, that door leads into the hangar bay. This is just like a monitoring computer, monitoring computer that they can actually look at the um, the engines. We have a super weapon on board in case we need to detonate the ship. And then over here, just more computer stuff. Oh, these are the Isotope 9 um, processors right here. So you can see we actually have the Isotope in the in that chamber. And so the storage of it is back here. And this comes from the, um, I forget what that raid is called. The one with the, the hut in the machine. 
been a while to kind of forget what it is, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. So that's the <clears throat> that's all the design on the ship. It took an awful long time to put this all together, like over the course of years, pretty much of acquiring the ship initially and then unlocking each of the decks. And back when I initially acquired the ship, it was back when like having half a billion credits was being super rich. That's not the case now. Now credits are just super easy to get. But so it was a lot to get all of this, all the decos. So a lot of people actually helped by donating decos to the ship. And then a lot of people helped with sort of like inspirations for different rooms, different locations. And like I said, Darth Callis himself, um, who is one of the best designers did the layout of a lot of the rooms initially 